What is going on, you guys? It is The Talking Sasquatch. It's great to have you back. A couple weeks ago, I dropped my latest intro video on how to use Flipper, and you guys showed up. So far, it's gotten 36,000 views, 1.4K likes. You guys are absolutely awesome. It's also got almost 200 comments, which got me to thinking, hey, maybe I should answer some of these questions and reply back to you guys. I'm always asking you guys to leave your comments and opinions down below, and I promise you, I read through all that stuff. Today, I'm going to go through questions, comments, good, bad, and ugly. We're going to see them all. So grab some popcorn and get comfy. This one's going to be interesting. So the first comment I want to address is actually from Lord Conda, one of the mods on the Discord. He had a great comment on something I completely missed out on. He pointed out that on lab.flipper.net, you can actually install all of the same apps that are on the mobile app store, but on the computer. So let's pop on down to the desktop and I'll show you how. All right, so we're going to go to lab.flipper.net. You will notice it is a different domain than the, um, you know, the, the store. So lab.flipper.net, connect your flipper, make sure you don't have QFlipper open, very important, and go ahead and slam that connect button going to ask if it wants to connect to the serial port hit connect and any luck bam it's working so there's actually a bunch of really cool stuff you can do on here you can actually paint on the screen of your flipper and this actually comes out directly on the screen which is kind of fun you have nfc tools that work with the my fair classic keys that you've collected you can run manual attacks this way which is really cool you have direct access to the cli which is pretty cool i've got extreme installed right there they have their own cli which is kind of cool obviously you can view the files that are on your flipper right now also if we go to apps this is where we can install apps from the app store which is pretty darn cool if you ask me so yeah we can just scroll through here and pick something and just install it so let's say what do we want to do let's install pong just click install and really it's that easy and it's going to go ahead and install pong i'll even go ahead and show you if i close this and then open qflipper because you don't want to have lab.flipper.net and qflipper open at the same time it will not work and if we go to apps, go down to games, and we should find do, 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 Pong. Here we go. Pretty cool. Now, it was, I think, already installed anyway because it's on Extreme. But if you don't have apps and you want to install them with a computer, this is the easiest way to do it using the official App Store. Man, I can't believe I forgot about lab.flipper.net on the tutorial video. It's such a powerful tool, and, you know, it's a disservice to you guys for forgetting about it. So I really wanted to make sure I mentioned it in this video. Now, the next comment is from my buddy Uber. Uber Guidos is pretty much the first guy who put all the Flipper files in the same place. Now, in the last video, I made an SD card friendly repository of all of Uber's files. So all you had to do was download it and then drop it directly onto your SD card. But I want to make sure everybody knows Uber Guidos. That's where all of those files came from. He was the one that did all of this. All I did was reorganize it. It's not my work. It's all his. Moving on, let's see what's next. Here's a good one from Card Trick Tuts. I'm assuming they do tutorials on card tricks. Um, when you install both XFW and RM firmware, are you actively running both at the same time, or are you able to choose between them in QFlipper? That is a great question. We get this all the time. So when you have a custom firmware installed on the Flipper, that is the only firmware that is actively running and installed on the Flipper. So there's really no way of actually running two different firmwares at the same time and going one from firmware A to firmware B. However, what you can do is just flash between two of them. You can leave the update files in your update folder and basically just flash between two. It's like a five minute process, really not the end of the world. So if you want to run two firmwares, three firmwares, whatever, that's really the way to do it. All right, let's see what else we got. Uh, James Parker 1839. What I would absolutely love is if someone would put all the functionality of the Flipper Zero into a sonic screwdriver design. Doctor Who mod, anyone? Okay, I'm totally down with this idea. That would be cool. Now, while making that a reality may be a little bit outside of my skill set, there is one place that you can go if you need help with stuff like that. And that would be none other than our sponsor, PCBWay. When you're making a sonic screwdriver, you're going to need some sort of metal base. Well, guess what? PCBWay does CNC machining, so they got you covered there. 
And what's inside a Sonic screwdriver? A whole bunch of PCBs. Guess what? They got you covered there. They've got a full line of PCBs. They can make you almost anything you want, and they even offer PCB assembly so you don't have to solder it yourself. Sonic screwdrivers also covered in a bunch of small fiddly bits, and guess what? They can 3D print those little bits for you too, in a number of materials. You've seen their 3D prints before when I did the clear case mod, they are immaculate. While you're there, don't forget to check out the module store. They've got all sorts of great stuff. Soldering irons, you've seen my screwdrivers, you've seen my Nixie clocks, all sorts of great stuff in there. So thanks as always to PCBWay for your continued support. Let's get back at it. All right, moving on. Uh, here's a question that I actually get asked all the time. It's a great question. This time it's from Bet O Diaz. Hello, great video. I want a Flipper Zero, but I noticed that it's been on the market for some time. Do you know if a new version is coming up soon? Wants to know if you should wait to buy it. Anybody who's been in the Flipper Zero community for a while knows that for a good period of time, there was a project called Flipper One that was in the works. Now, the Flipper One has been scrubbed entirely from Flipper's website. However, thanks to the Wayback Machine, we can actually go back in time and see what it looked like. All right, here we are back in April of 2020. We can see the Flipper One. This was actually supposed to be running Kali Linux, which is kind of cool. Um, still got your micro SD card. It's got a new ARM computer inside there, which is cool. And yeah, this was supposed to run Linux. It's got the same screen. Um, so, you know, pretty similar profile. However, on the side here, you can see that even at this point in the project that they were really not sure what they wanted to do in which direction they wanted to go. Because right here, that looks like what's probably a Raspberry Pi Zero integrated in there. And then they just got rid of that whole idea. Moving on. And then, yeah, they've got links to participate and stuff. So, yeah, this is the Flipper One. This thing is, again, completely gone, basically, from existence, so I wouldn't wait for this thing whatsoever. Now, that being said, there is a new device that the Flipper devs are actually working on. I've been tuning into all of the Q&As, so all of the information that I have is in no way insider knowledge, but there is a new device, it's called the Flipper Nano, and what this is is basically the Flipper Zero, but pretty much entirely GPIO based. So, should you wait? for the Flipper Nano and not get a Flipper Zero? Probably not, honestly, because the Flipper Nano is gonna be a lot more kind of complicated because you need add-on boards really for most of the functionality. Also, that being said, it's gonna be more complicated of a device. So you're really better off starting with a Flipper Zero than when the Nano comes out, grabbing one of those. It's a great question though, I get it all the time. So thanks for asking. All right, so here's another question I get all the time, and I figured this is a great time to address it. This one's from Mick Mitz, and Mick, 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 Mick Mitz 04. Uh, so I followed the steps, but an error popped up. What should I do? I'm new to this, so any kind of help would be greatly appreciated. Now, I kind of group this into the same kind of category as the don't ask to ask question. Anytime you're reaching out for help in any of these communities, be as specific as you possibly can. Let us know what you're doing, what the error is, what you've tried, what you've tried to fix, what you failed at. Literally all the information that you can give us makes it a lot easier for us to assist you. Also keep in mind, especially in discords, these are volunteers, if anything, or just random other people. Nobody's entitled to help you. If someone decides to help you, be as polite as possible because that person is taking time out of their day to assist you directly. Especially when it comes to like asking someone to do a voice chat or to watch you do stuff, that means they have to entirely stop their day to help you. Now the Flipper community is absolutely awesome and there's so much help to get out there. So don't feel afraid to ask. However, don't ask to ask. Anybody who's been there before knows what I'm talking about. Don't ask to ask a question. If you have a question, just ask it. So that way we know exactly what you're looking for, exactly who can help you, and you know, the best way to get you the help you need. I promise you, following this simple etiquette will get you so much better help and faster. All right, moving on again. So here's another question I get asked quite a lot. I kind of feel bad about it, honestly. This time it's from Axel Gannon 9146 Yo, talking sassy. Please make a video showcasing Squatchware again. I'm interested in switching. Man, I miss this project. I love having a firmware and, you know, updating it and doing all of that stuff, but I just didn't have time for it. The Flipper Zero community moves so quickly that, you know, having and updating a firmware is almost a full-time job in itself. I honestly can't give the custom firmware devs enough credit. It's a ton of work. And then, you know, the official Flipper guys will go and launch an update and then everything will have to get refactored. And I mean, no fun. 
All right, next comment. This one comes from Connor Jackson 5050. He says, I think I'm the only one who lit up seeing a bump in the night reference. I thought it wasn't a real part of my childhood. I absolutely love throwing in those retro references, the after these messages bumps. I love those. I could honestly make an entire retro channel watching old videos, TV shows, movies, going over video games, but you know, that's a whole other topic. All right, moving on. Eat My Dust says, don't you need to delete the apps folder before flashing custom firmware? That's actually a great question. I don't always do it. It's not a bad idea. So what can happen is if there are leftover apps that aren't on one firmware and are on the other, uh, it might not work when you go to run it. So it'll end up with a little question mark as an icon. So if you're ever running into a situation where you run into a bunch of API mismatches, where you run into all the uh, apps have question mark logos, delete the apps folder, reinstall the custom firmware, and then everything should be working fine. Honestly, this is another one of those things that I really should have mentioned in the first video. It's kind of hard when you're doing these big giant tutorials on everything you need to know. Uh, some things do fall through the cracks and I really apologize when that happens. Here's a question from TechBig6134. Hello, how are you doing, bro? Doing pretty good, you know, just making a video. It's what I usually do on Sundays, so uh, thanks for the comment. This next one's great. I love these comments. This one's from Lackey's Packy. Good overview, but I feel like I got ADHD and epilepsy from watching this. You're welcome. It's always great when I can give back to the community. I do as much as I can to make sure these videos are fun and engaging. So the fact that you really got something out of it means the world to me. I do actually get a decent amount of comments about this, especially like my moving my arms around and things like that. It's literally just something I do. Honestly, for me, it's really hard to just sit still, like to deliver an entire video, not moving at all, just looking at the camera. It's really hard for me. Even there, I couldn't just sit still. I had to move my head around. I literally can't do it. So sorry if it's distracting, but hey, that's the way it's going to be. Here's one from Linerish. Nice. Hell yeah. And another from Corey Morrell. Awesome. Let's go. All kidding aside, any amount of engagement is absolutely great from you guys. Even the one word stuff, it drives engagement, it drives the, the algorithm. And I mean, it's just awesome that you took that much time out of your day to just write anything. I say it all the time, but I honestly mean it. You guys are absolute legends, each and every one of you. All right, let's switch gears a little bit and we're gonna get into the comments held for review. For those of you who don't know, YouTube has an auto mod. Basically, if you say something wild enough, YouTube is gonna put it into basically purgatory where I have to either approve or reject that comment. Now, there's a lot of videos, so there's a lot of comments, so I don't get a chance to go through here very often. So if you think you're being censored, it's not by me, it's just by YouTube. All right, our first spicy comment is something that I get kind of all the time. Uh, this is Bilbasaur 1587. Doesn't matter what you do at the beginning as a disclaimer, these videos are helping criminals. Now, I completely understand this point. Keeping in mind, all of the stuff that I show in my videos pretty much have been around for almost a decade in many cases. Nothing the Flipper Zero can do is new. In fact, it's pretty much worse at doing all those things than every other tool designed to have those features. Like the Hack RF with Portapack is way more feature rich than Flipper Zero is. That came out in 2014. So again, it's been around for a really long time. I'm teaching people how to test their own hardware. I actually have a lot of fun testing my own hardware. So I think sharing that with other people is a good idea. Also keep in mind, again, nothing I'm sharing here is new. It's been around forever. It's so well documented everywhere. If you wanted to learn how to de-auth networks, you don't need me to tell you how to do it. All right, spicy comment number two from Linux 42, oh, 42069, of course it's 42069. Linux 42069 says, your videos are such trash. I mean, you don't have to watch them. I mean, it's YouTube, there are other videos. You can just click, click the button. There's other stuff out there. Along the same lines comes RJ Brick. Uh, when the fuck did you find the time to do anything besides make this shit fucking videos? First of all, it's these shitty fucking videos. I know it's just YouTube comments, but grammar is important. And quite honestly, it's hard to find the time. I spend an entire day making these videos every week, usually on a Sunday, depending upon where the schedule lies. And I work a full time job, so it's pretty busy. But again, you guys are absolutely awesome. So it's the least I can do to give back to the community. Now, the next comment I'm not even going to show because there's kind of a few of them along the same lines. A few people did get pretty upset with me when I did my bad USB ransomware video. Those people fall into two camps. 
One camp is you shouldn't be showing this at all. People don't need to know these things exist. On the flip side, the other camp's upset because I showed off a script and I wouldn't make it available to everyone. So again, the reason why I make these videos is to spread awareness that these types of things exist and how easy it is for someone to take advantage if you don't know how to protect yourself. And as far as why I wasn't distributing that script, it's really pretty simple. First of all, it's literally illegal in many states to distribute malware. So distributing that file is a big no-no, so we're not gonna do it strictly because of that. Furthermore, as I mentioned in my video, I am genuinely afraid of what might happen with that script. I see two very possible negative outcomes. One, you install the script and you misconfigure the Discord webhook so that you can't get the decryptor key. All you gotta do is copy one thing wrong, that's all, and then it's over, you're screwed. What are you gonna do? Secondly, some kid's dumb enough to run it in a school. If that was the case, you will get taught and they will arrest you. Honestly, I just don't wanna be responsible for that. So if some kid's gonna ruin the rest of their life, it ain't gonna be because of me. So yeah, that's a bunch of comments from a bunch of different videos. Again, I do read through all that stuff. So anytime you guys engage, it just, it's awesome. What do you guys think about this style of video? I haven't done a QA and a in forever. And you know, again, so many people leave so many great comments. It's great to go through once in a while and read them for you. As always, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, tell your friends, tell your baseball team, I don't know, tell somebody. You guys are absolutely the best. We'll catch you next time. I forgot to trim my mustache this morning, so I apologize for it being so long. Anyway, take it easy.